Hey, Nicolette here. I'm a Google Workspace specialist focused on public sector. And today we will be discussing contact store access because you don't want anybody on your team to say, I've got a bad feeling about this. With contact store access, you can set up different access levels based on a user's identity and the context of the request, like location, device security status, maybe even IP address. Expanding these policies to other Google Workspace entry points, such as Google Drive for desktop or using Gvo on your mobile. This gives admins greater control over how, when, and where users can access Workspace resources. You can still set access policies such as two-step verification or what others call multi-factor authentication for all members of an organizational unit or group. Context-aware access provides additional granular and contextual controls for users. A few of the ways I've seen context-aware access used is when you want to allow access to apps from only company-issued devices, allow access to drive only if a user's device is encrypted, and restricting access to apps from outside of the corporate network. You can also combine more than one use case into a policy. For example, you could create an access level that requires app access from devices that are company owned, encrypted, and meet minimum OS version. The first step in setting context aware access is to create an access level that combines conditions and values that define a user or device context. Access levels define the context within which a user can access apps. For example, you can create an access level for accessing Gmail that requires users to connect from a specific IP address range and require that their devices be encrypted. So let's say Mary's using Gmail on her laptop in the corporate office, and then she decides to walk to a nearby coffee shop where she plans to continue using Gmail. Because her IP address changed, she won't be able to access Gmail at the coffee shop. If you, the admin, specify that users can only connect to Gmail from a corporate IP address range. Private IP addresses aren't supported in this example. Now, before I show you the fun stuff of setting up context where access, I'd like to talk to you about the two rollout options you will have when setting up context where access. You can turn on context aware access at different times in the rollout process. You can turn it on before creating access levels and assigning them to apps, which means that access levels you assign to apps are enforced immediately. Or you can do an initial setup and review, so access level creation, access level assignment, endpoint verification, without turning on context aware access. During this time, access level assignments are not enforced. When you're done configuring, you can then turn on context aware access. So let's show you a little bit about how to set up context aware access. To turn on context aware access, we're going to go ahead and start in the admin console. We'll move your gaze to the left side of the screen here, and we're going to go ahead and click to the left of security. In the dropdown, we'll go ahead and click the caret to the left of access and data control, and we're gonna find context aware access. Over on the right, you'll notice that context aware access is currently turned off. We can enable context aware access for everyone by turning it on. It is important to note that context aware access is gonna be on or off for everybody. However, once we get to assigning the access levels, that's when you can assign an access level to current OUs that you have set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to review an access level that I have currently set up, and then we'll jump back into this screen and we'll turn on our context to access. So we'll move our gaze just to the right here where we see access levels. I'm going to go ahead and click into my access levels, and you'll notice that I have one access level created. If I wanted to create a new access level, we'll move our gaze to the upper right corner and you can click create access level. But again, today I'm gonna to just review an access level that I have predefined. 
So you'll notice we have a detail section where I've named the access level, and then maybe you wanna provide it a brief description. If we scroll down a bit, your access level is going to consist of one or more conditions that you are going to define. So access level conditions contain attributes that you are gonna select, such as device policy, geographic region, IP subnet, etc. You can create two different types of access levels. So you have basic mode in the upper left here and advanced. Now basic mode does provide you with a list of those predefined conditions and you can add as many of the attribute conditions as you want. And then you have advanced. So in advanced mode is where you can create access levels that you might not be able to create with the basic settings such as you might want to create an access level to include a vendor condition for third-party integrations, or maybe the ability to use a certificate-based authentication. So in this mode, you can build those custom levels using common expression language. For example, here in advance, you can create an access level that maybe requires the devices encrypted, and one or more of the following is true. Either the request originated from the states, or the device that requested originates from an approved domain by the admin. For now, I'm not gonna touch advanced. I'm actually just gonna hop back into basic mode. And here again, we have our geographic origin is the United States. So anybody that is going to access the app that we'll select has to come from the United States. In the lower right, you will see a blue save button if you're creating a new access level. But today, since this is predefined, I'll go ahead and just hit cancel. We'll be taken back to the access levels list. Now that we've created an access level, let's go ahead and assign that access level to the apps. Moving your gaze to the upper left corner, we're gonna select context to where access in the breadcrumbs and we'll choose assign access levels. So here is where you can assign access levels to specific apps. And remember, we can do this on an OU basis. So what I'll do is move your gaze to the left. I'm gonna find my Back to the Future OU. Today we'll focus on Gmail. I could either check the box to the left of Gmail and in the upper portion of this table choose Assign. Or if I hover over Gmail over to the right, I can choose the blue Assign button. Now you'll get a couple of pop-ups. The first option in the pop-up means that users, if they meet the condition of your access level, will be granted access to this app. So I'm gonna choose Back to the Future access level. You'll also have an option below that says apply to Google Desktop and Mobile Apps. This is very, very important. To apply access levels to the desktop Android and iOS apps, as well as web apps, where we wanna make sure this box is checked. It is important to note that this box does only apply to native apps. But again, we recommend that you check this box whenever you assign access levels to apps and always deploy endpoint verification from a security standpoint. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and hit save. And just like that, we've created and assigned an access level. In the upper left, we'll click back to our context to our access breadcrumb. And then I can choose that turn on option if I would like to turn on that access level and those apps that have been assigned. Thanks for joining us as we covered context to access. Stay tuned for our next video to learn more about how you can set up and customize your mobile device management. And be sure to check out the description below for helpful links and subscribe to the Google Workspace YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us.